Okay, you've heard the word competence, is that person competent, banded around everywhere. In this video we're going to explain what that is, how to get it, how do we break it down, how do we understand it. Let's go. I've done a podcast on competence. I think it was called Competence Versus Something. I can't remember. It was a bit of a silly podcast, but it's something that I think a lot of businesses overlook. It's a lot of businesses think training is just enough. I'm going to touch on that as well. So watch this video and just kind of watch it with an open mind thinking, you know, I want to walk away and think about what competence is. But my warning to you is it's not easy to develop true competence there is so many components to it and we're going to break those down in the video okay so competence we'll give you a little bit of a brief intro here so what is competence competence is defined in so many different ways there's kate there's skate god knows how many other acronyms probably out there as well and we will touch on that and give you a rebranded safety version of that competence is kind of looked at from two different perspectives in health and safety you're required to have a competent person to help you deliver your requirements in a health and safety at work at i genuinely believe that was probably the birth of the health and safety industry um, which you know I can't complain but I do think that a lot of us think that we have to have the health and safety professional which is a whole other conversation and I've probably covered it millions of times on a podcast so go check the podcast out in law we've defined competence a couple of times there was a civil case which is in my book here um, and this was uh, 1962 stated that a competent person is a person with practical and theoretical knowledge as well as sufficient experience of the particular machinery, plant or procedure involved to enable them to identify defects or weaknesses during plant machinery examinations to assess their importance in relation to the strength and function of that plant and machinery. You know, we don't keep things simple in law. Then in Reg 7 as well, it re references what I've just touched on earlier, every employer shall employ one or more competent persons to assist him in undertaking the measures he needs to comply with the requirements and prohibitions opposed upon him by or under the relevant statutory provisions. I think we can do this a lot simpler because at the end of the day, if you don't have competent people to do what you need to do, then you're going to do either a shit job or you're not going to last very long as a business. Forget health and safety. If you don't have competent people to do what you need to do, it's just going to be crap. So we're going to touch on that today. We're going to touch on how we get competent people. It is a legal requirement, but the long and short of it is if the people are not competent to do what they do, they're either going to deliver a crap job or they're going to hurt themselves and therefore get you as a business in trouble. So it's really important and it can deliver some real potential if you've got some good competent people in place. So let's get into my tips for delivering competence. Okay, so we're legally required to provide information, instruction and training. That's referencing quite a lot of pieces of legislation, but primarily the Health and Safety at Work Act. So information, instruction and training is something that health and safety professionals would touch on quite a lot. You've probably heard time and time again. However, whilst it is very, very important and is part of delivering competency, we need to remember that just doing that is not enough. A lot of us just deliver some training and we write some procedures and we put some signs out and we think, boom, we've done our job, we've ticked our box, but you're not delivering competency. So let's quickly touch on it. Information. I've talked about this in a lot of other videos, but information is that guidance, those procedures, the signage, all those things that you put out. You could argue that procedure is also instructions as a way you do stuff. If you think about it, when you buy something from IKEA, you get the information, which is your warnings, which is uh, how many things you've got in there, what tools you need. Then you'll have your instructions, which is step one, pick up drill, step two, turn on drill, etc., etc. You don't get any training with it because you don't really need any training. The information and instruction is enough. But if I was putting together a machine or a car, I would probably need years and years of training. So this is where I think the birth of SKATE and KATE and all these other acronyms came from is that we need to consider as well experience, kind of time served, attitudes, which all kind of come encompass behaviours. How people are, how they act is kind of so important but it's very very difficult for us to kind of manage that stuff so we've got to think about the behaviors and the easiest way for i think that we we consider our behaviors is you look at the environment 
I've always said, and I've said it quite a lot on the podcast, I've said for a long time, that the environment that we're in defines the behaviours that we do. So think about it. Not all of us get in the car and think we're going to break the speed limit. But when we get on the M1 or the M6 or whatever, we probably end up breaking the speed limit. Why? Because everybody's doing it. That one person gets in front of you and you end up in that really annoying situation where you end up keep overtaking the same person over and over again. Because as time goes and cars are just moving, you lose concept of the kind of speed you're actually doing and everyone's going a certain speed. So the environment defines your behavior and actually takes some kind of resolve and discipline to not speed. So that's just an easy way to kind of think about it. But if you're not happy with the behaviors in your workplace and you need to look at yourself and look at the workplace first, you've got to provide information, instruction and training, but you've got to consider the environment that you're creating in your workplace. And this is what I think people are talking about when we talk about culture, how people feel in the workplace, how are they behaving? All these things encompass competence. Okay, so how do we actually deliver competency? Well, we mentioned all those acronyms earlier, and just to kind of make it even more annoying, um, I've slightly changed one as well. So I've always gone with kind of Kate or Skate, um, but Skate kind of makes more sense for me. So um, don't get me wrong, you've probably heard me mention Kate as well. To be honest, they're all the same. They all ask the same questions, but let's go with Skate for this video. I've added the E on the bottom, which is environment, so it's actually Skatey, um, but we've touched on environment as well. So before we get into that, you need to know first what you actually want from a person. So let's imagine that scenario that we're employing somebody, right? So what do you want from that person? Do you want somebody to just come in, run a machine to a good standard and go home? Well, in that case, this is probably quite easy. You know, we're going to look at the skills. Do they know how to run the machine? Have they run that machine before? You know, have they run a similar machine before? Do they know the components within that machine? Have they got the tangible skills to run that machine? So maybe in an interview or an assessment, you want to, them to show you that skills. I don't know. You've got some kind of fake control panel in the room, but then if you're going to look for, say, a manager or say even a health and safety professional, you're looking for somebody to come in and challenge something, it's a completely different question. So you've got to decide what you want from that person. You know, do you want someone to come in and do a job? That's fine. Do you want someone to come in and throw some challenges out there? Do you want someone to be a bit different? Then you need to look at what you've already got. Um, so ask yourself that first. What do you want from this person? Because you can't answer these questions or the person that you're employing can't answer these questions until you know that. So let's break down this then. So skills, I touched on it a second. The tangible skills the people need to do the job. If you're hiring a safety professional, have they got the skills to do a risk assessment? Have they done one before? Have they got the tangible skills to do that? If you're a bricklayer, have they got the tangible skills to pick up the brick, put the brick down? Do they know how to make cement, etc., etc.? Next, we've got the knowledge. Do they understand? Now, knowledge can be of real get into the nitty gritty of stuff, say like an engineer, their knowledge is going to be in depth. They're, you're going to want them to know the ins and outs of the machine, you know, why it does that, what happens to this, the cause and the effect, etc., etc. If you're hiring somebody to come in and run a machine, you just want the knowledge of that machine and the product that they're running maybe, or something similar. Let's consider a salesman. The skills of a salesman would be that they can influence people, that they can sell something. So you get that old analogy of, you know, sell me this pen, or they can build relationships. The knowledge will be of that product. They necessarily may not need to have that, and if they don't have that, but you like their skills, that's fine, but you need to realize that you're gonna to have to upskill them on that product. Attitude. Well, let's stick with the salesman, for example. They've got to have a good attitude. They've got to want to sell that product. They've got to want to be part of that business. They've got to have a nice attitude. You know, they, you don't want them to be a dick. You're not going to sell something if, if the guy's a dickhead. Personally, I hate pushy salesmen. Some people are okay with pushy salesmen. You've got to ask yourself what you want. Do you want a pushy salesman? That's fine. Then you've got to accept that you might lose somebody like me that hates a pushy salesman. Do you want someone who loves running that machine? who loves machinery, who loves that product. What is their attitude? Do they want to work with you? Are they a positive person? Do you want someone to be a little bit different? You, maybe you've got a real positive workplace and everyone thinks that everything's happy-go-lucky and everyone's really overly optimistic and you think, do you know what, shit, we need a pessimist in here. That's fine. You've got to know what you want, what you've got and what you want. 
So remember when we said earlier about who we're employing? Are we employing like that kind of person in a manager role or a safety professional to come in and challenge stuff? You might want someone in that kind of devil's advocate role, that kind of 13th man kind of position that will just come in and challenge stuff. So it really does depend on what you're looking for. They're training. I think in the industry personally, without getting on too much of a rant, I think we focus on the people's training a hell of a lot and we look at certificates and we think, right, you've got that certificate so they've got all of these skills and knowledge. Training is something that delivers something. It's a day, it's a week, it's whatever. And it shows a lot of effort, it shows passion probably that they've, you know, say if somebody self-funded something, you can see that they want to do it and that's good. It does show a certain level of competency, but it's not everything. So I would absolutely emphasize that maybe you extend the interview period or you, you really start looking at people's skills and their knowledge and their attitude, not just looking at their training. So many businesses out there will have a training matrix, but actually don't even consider the attitudes of their people. They don't even consider the actual skills and knowledge that their people have got. Because it doesn't matter, we've got a certificate that says they've been on this course or that course. So training is good, it's real simple, real easy to kind of work that out. You know what the training delivers, you know what you want, you're just looking for a tick box there. So a good way to put that into context is that there's a classic saying we've all heard that you learn to drive once you pass your test. You know, so we have training, our driving lessons, we have months and months of it probably, or if you're as bad as me, you'd have years and years of it. Not really. But then when you get onto the motorway for the first time, you start to really learn how to drive because over the years, you develop experience, which is the next thing. You can tell when someone's not gonna turn off even though their indicators are on. For example, you start to pick up those little cues, or that car looks like it's not gonna do this or it is gonna do that. That comes with experience. Do you always need experience? It really depends on what you want. You know, a lot of us say, you know, I, mem I remember for the first, you know, as a young person looking for work, it was always every single job said, must be experienced in this, must be experienced in that. And it's like, well, how are you ever going to get experience? So it's extremely frustrating sometimes for people looking for work, but you've got to understand what you want. Are you willing to have someone with a good level of skills or a good attitude, maybe? Someone's got a great attitude. You know, I love this person. I'm willing to send them on some training, upskill them, and give them, give them the experience they need. You might be looking for someone to come in and really kind of run a team. You might want them to come in and do some real high risk kind of roles or something like that. And you think, I need this person to have the top end of pretty much all of this and a shed load of experience. Now we're talking in the context of having somebody uh, new coming into the business. You can still ask all the same questions of the people you've currently got. You can go around, you can do surveys. The easiest way to get this stuff is you ask people. You go and work with them. You go and walk around, have a cup of tea. How, how do you feel about doing your job? You know, Do you feel like you know what you're doing? Most people will turn around and say, oh, I, I want some training. That's because that's all they've ever been given. But actually start asking a question, well, what do you want training on? Or, you know, there's this one bit in the machine and it turns out we've got Bob who's worked on that machine for 50 years. He's got a shed load of experience. He's actually got a really good attitude, loads of knowledge, and he's particularly skilled on that one job. Let's just get you shadowing that guy. Are you good with that? Yeah, actually, I really like Bob. You know, so all these kind of things work. I've touched on environment a minute ago, but I do think it's really important that you think about the environment. You know, all of this stuff, you can do the skills, you can have the skills, sorry, you can have the knowledge, you can have a good attitude, you can have training, you can have experience, but if you're in a shitty environment, it doesn't matter. You'll end up molding yourself to that environment. And if it's a bad environment, if it's an over procedural based environment, then that's what you're going to get. People that follow procedures, whether they come in, you can employ someone to come in and challenge something. But if you've got an environment that doesn't allow that because you're saying you must follow this, you must do that. After a period of time, they'll, they'll stop challenging. So you've got to consider the environment. So skills, knowledge, attitude, training, experience, but finally environment as well. I think those are all simple things that we can start asking our business. And once we start focusing on that, we can start delivering competence. But the key focus you take away from this is that it's not all about training. 
Okay, so to sum up, you've got all of that. You you understand what skills are. You're watching this video, so yeah, that's really that's really helpful, James. But you know, the last consultants I said said we'll go do a training needs analysis. Now I was listening to a very good podcast, uh, the Learning and Development podcast. Can't remember the gentleman's name, but you can go find it. And they said on there that training needs analysis ha is fundamentally flawed in just what it's called because you're assuming you need training. And that kind of struck a chord with me because, you know, as you probably picked up in this, I have my backup about this, that we think training delivers everything. So, you know, don't do a training needs analysis. Don't even do a competency analysis. Remember what I said earlier, go and talk to your teams, go and talk to your staff, talk to your operators, your builders, whatever you're doing, ask them how they feel. You know, how are you getting on with this job? You know, what have you been up to? Tell me what you're doing. You might not have a good enough environment to do that now, but just go and do it. Eventually you'll start building a good environment where they feel comfortable to come to you and say what they feel and say, I don't feel comfortable doing this. And that takes time. All of this takes time. The way to do health and safety correctly is not even just health and safety. The way to build a good business and build a good community within your business, inherently then bringing competence takes time. Okay, so thanks for watching guys. That was competence, how we have it, what it is, how we deliver it. I hope you found that useful. If you have found it useful, hit the like button. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit subscribe and the bell so you never miss another episode. Drop below why you're thinking about looking at competency. Is it for a new person? Is it for your existing people? I'd be really interested to know what you're thinking about in the context of competence. Drop it in the comments below so we can engage with each other. Don't forget to check out the podcast as well. Just Google Rebranding Safety Podcast. It's available on all of the major platforms. You can subscribe for them as well. So thanks for watching. This has been Competence. I'll see you in the next video. Safe.